In this video, we're going to be going over the basics of getting started in PCP air guns. There's going to be an incredible amount of things to go over, so I'll have timestamps and everything broken down into different sections. Hopefully that'll make things a little bit more digestible. My first question for you if you're getting into PCP air guns, what are you actually looking to do with the air gun? What are your expectations? Now when we get involved with compressors or hand pump, what are you actually trying to do with it? Are you trying to fill transfer tanks? If so, you're going to need a bigger unit. I have the larger Air Venture unit, the older model, not the newer one that came out. This will fill a transfer tank 74 or 98 cubic foot from 3000 PSI to 4500 PSI in about 15 to 20 minutes. I highly recommend going the transfer tank route because you're going to save yourself an incredible amount of time. If that's not in your budget and you're just looking for a hand pump or maybe a smaller compressor just to fill the cylinders on the gun, you're going to have more downtime filling, especially with the hand pump. The hand pump's going to be very limited on the bottle size or else you're probably going to be killing yourself filling these things. You can get away with the hand pump on guns that have larger cylinders, but it's definitely going to be a struggle for the bigger ones. Something like a Bandit would be much easier than, say, a Gauntlet to fill. If you're using the smaller compressors just to fill the cylinder on the tanks, you will have downtime, but not nearly as much as with the hand pump. So just going over filling options, there's a lot of choices you can make. You can technically just get a transfer tank. If you have a local fill shop, like a scuba or paintball store, they could fill your transfer tanks for you. So you can bypass a compressor and just get a transfer tank. The transfer tank is going to be the easiest way to fill. It's incredibly fast and then when you have that you gain the ability to tether so you're pretty much getting uninterrupted shooting for probably as long as you'd want to with a gauntlet 30 and a 98 cubic foot tank you could easily i'd have to say you get 500 shots easy out of that you could just sit all day tethered hooked up to the gauntlet 30 with a transfer tank but you're probably gonna end up getting bored of shooting before the tank runs out Let's say you get a compressor though. Before you do anything, have a rag under your drain. You will definitely want that for oil and moisture. Now, before I start, I leave this bleed valve open a little bit. It's so cold in my basement. We're at 11.8 degrees C. I leave this valve open and running until this hits 15 C, just to get things heated a little bit. So say you were gonna fill the tank right now. This is the line off the unit. I have that in my alpha filter. So I have this line that I fill from instead of going straight from this line. We just have one extra filter in place. And this thing's an absolute monster. If you had this compressor and you did not have the alpha filter, you would just be filling straight from where this connects in, right into your tank. I have an extra step involved since I'm filling a transfer tank. If you're filling just a cylinder, you will never have to do this, but if you're filling a transfer tank, you have to see what pressure you're at before you fill it. Let's do that right now. I leave all my fill lines plugged. So all we have to do for this right now, since it already has a plug in the line for the tank, we just got to open the valve. We'll see where we're at. We're at right around 3100 PSI. So let's pretend like we're going to fill this right now. Let's bleed the tank. Let's remove the plug. This is the line coming out of the filter. We just gotta move this nipple cover. These two get hooked up. Now I have two bleed valves on this filter, one here, close that, and then one up here. Now this will not allow any air into this line until that gauge hits about 1,500 to 2,000 PSI. So now for this unit, we're gonna turn on the cooling. Fans on, power on. Now I just have to wait for the pressure to hit 3,100 PSI and then we're gonna crack the valve on that tank. Once that's completed, we just let it sit there until it hits 4,500 PSI. And then on my unit, not all of them, this has an auto shut off and then it'll just kick off. 
I'm gonna let this go and fill, and then I'll show you what we do once it's done. Compressor shut off automatically. We're gonna flip the switch, turn off the cooling. Now, if you're doing a transfer tank, the most important thing after filling it, it's really simple. Close the valve. <laughs> because if you don't, you're gonna be pissing air out the line when you bleed it. So that's closed. Now, since I have an alpha filter, the instructions say to crack this slightly. And then we're gonna do the main bleed from the bleed valve here. And I just keep a towel in my hand, this can get really loud. Definitely don't want that in your gun. All right, so that's drained, but then all we have left is this. This is the last piece. That gets shut. This gets shut. And then I close this one all the way, but I just leave it a little bit cracked in case there's any residual air in there. Sometimes when you crack it back open after it's completely shut, it'll have some pressure in there. So other than that, we're just disconnecting this cable, putting our plugs back in, and we have a full tank. Oh, and one last thing on this unit, or any compressor, do not start the compressor up if you have air in the line. So say you're doing a fill, you cut the compressor, there's still 2,000, 2,500 PSI in the line, you gotta bleed the line first and then restart the unit from zero. The most important thing is going to be protecting your investments. Your investments being your PCP air guns. And the number one thing is going to be getting a nice solid filter, something high quality. Even if you are in a dry environment, I would still get a decent filter because when you're looking at these things, I'm thinking at least 20, 30 years down the road, I want my gear to be in good shape for that long. There's absolutely no reason why any of these PCP should fail other than seals and just basic maintenance that needs to be done you don't need moisture and oil and other things getting into your gun and fouling it up from the inside out when it comes to buying anything for pcps finding a solid home base is key if you have a local pcp shop i would suggest checking them out and giving them some of your business some of the smaller places need some help there's definitely a monopoly in the air gun industry. You will also find places that will offer help to you. They'll walk you through things. They'll make suggestions before you even need to contact the manufacturer. To me, that's pretty top tier, having them being able to help you after the sale. Some places just, it's like they want to get the gun out and just never hear from you again unless you're buying. They don't want to hear any negatives. People get very upset sometimes. There are just instances where you will get a lemon. If you do have that happen, especially multiple times like I have, depending on how the store treats you and how they handle the process, that should be a pretty good sign of whether or not you should still be doing business with them. So you've decided that you wanted to get into PCP air guns. You found a compressor. You found your home base of operations, where to buy from, who's gonna help you when you need it before you end up buying a PCP. What are you actually looking for? What distances do you plan on shooting? Are you just plinking? Do you need tons of power? Are you looking for incredible accuracy, cheap ammo? Are you looking for efficiency? There's a million questions to ask, but the spec sheets on the websites, they should have almost all that information listed. This is all gonna come down to you after that. What's your preference? What are you looking for? Budget is going to be a high priority in this. You can definitely settle for something lower budget with the same specs as a PCP that is much more pricey. For instance, the Gauntlet 30 at $400 is in, in, it's an absolute monster. That has to be one of the best budget air rifles that I can possibly think of. If you're looking for something nicer and your budget allows it, go for it. 
There are so many options for PCPs, it's absolutely incredible. So you end up buying your PCP. This is the Air Force Condor SS. Your first priority is going to be inspecting the gun, making sure it's not damaged. The shipping companies, they're experts at absolutely destroying things, so check your gun, make sure it's in good order. Now the next step is filling this. Some of them will come pre-filled. If they come pre-filled, you know you don't really have to worry about leaks. When they're not filled, that's when you might have an issue. If you have the ability to have a fill test or maybe the store just does it already, I would advise doing it. You're just going to save yourself a hassle of receiving a lemon and then sending it right back out. And when I say receiving a lemon, these might have leaks. It might even just be the gauge. It could be the fill nipple just needs to be tightened down. It could be the bleed screw. There's some very basic things you can look over before you know, declaring that the gun is broken. And if you are filling from a zero fill, you will need to caulk the gun back or else you will not be filling it. You're going to be filling it and then you're just going to be hearing and going, what the hell is that? This thing's broken. I'm going to send it back. I couldn't tell you how many times I've heard stories of people with the Gauntlet 30 doing that and claiming it's a crap gun when it just comes down to not really knowing exactly which is fine because if you're new to things you're just not going to know but once you know then you know now i would suggest doing this not that i personally don't normally do this unless it's pretty apparent from the factory but if your gun's shooting like crap your barrel might be dirty so you might not think to check the barrel first thing when you get your gun but that would probably be a good idea if you're thinking about cleaning any of these and lubing anything, read the manual. Definitely watch out for that. You don't want to destroy your seals and whatnot. Don't make a rookie mistake like that. Do not oil the crap out of your guns. And if you do need to oil, use the right oil or grease. Now, for this, it's a single shot. So, this doesn't obviously have a magazine. But, if we were going to get into magazines, that's another thing you want to look into. Shock capacity. Do you care if it's single feed? Do you need magazines? If you need magazines, what's the capacity that you're looking for? Because obviously there's many aftermarket choices as well. High capacity mags, different mags. Some mags really suck from the factory, so definitely look out for that. Reviews are very, very helpful. If you can kind of get a consensus on what the majority of people are dealing with, some of the issues might be very common and have an easy fix, like say for the AEASF mags, a lot of people complain. But if you actually reset the mags and set the spring tension correctly, they pretty much work absolutely flawless. But if you have bad mags, you're gonna just attribute the gun being junk when it's something simple like a magazine. Or say for instance, the gun isn't grouping. The first question you would have for yourself is probably, well, is the barrel clean? But what ammo are you shooting? What velocity is it at? Forms are an incredible resource for information. They're also a resource for bad information too, but usually it's more good than bad. If I had issues with this Condor and I wanted to go to the forum and, you know, search what's the best ammo, you're going to get ammo suggestions. You're going to get power setting suggestions. Which you would need a chrono to absolutely, you know, fine tune and see exactly where you're at. So that's another thing too, chronograph. Get a chronograph. If you have an air gun, you need a chronograph. Regardless of even if you can adjust the power on the air gun, just shooting different grain ammo and seeing where the velocity's at, understanding what it takes to stabilize the round for the best accuracy. Because you go too fast, it might be less accurate. You go too slow, it might be accurate. It's kind of like Goldilocks. Now when you go to store your PCPs, always leave air in them. I leave about 1500 to 2000 PSI. I don't leave them maxed out, but I really coming from paintball and having all my tanks filled to the, to the brim and just stored like that. I, in 20 something years, I've never had a tank fail. One other thing I wanted to go over real quick. This is a 0.177 pellet gun with a choked barrel. I asked beforehand if this can actually take slugs, and Air Force told me directly that they do not recommend you use slugs in this. 
with a choked barrel, you probably could use slugs, but the diameter is going to need to be pretty much spot on. When you buy slugs, you're going to see, say if it was a 22 caliber, you'll see 0 0.219, 0 0.218, 0 0.217, 0 0.216. The 0 0.216 in my Benjamin Kratos is enough of a difference between that and the 0.219 that the 0.216 is absolute garbage, but the 0.219 is, it's incredible. I'm assuming I could probably do something similar to this, but I went into this knowing that I just wanted a, a pellet gun and I could just use heavier pellets versus slugs. I may look down the line on that and try some slugs, but for now I'm just focused on trying different pellets. But say for instance, like in my Gauntlet 30, I was using Nielsen slugs, and this is a choked barrel. They're .303 in the barrels. It says it's a 30 cal. I think it's a .297 or something like that. But the ammo worked absolutely flawless. The .303 NSA worked absolutely flawless. Until it didn't. And... My main thing about pellet guns, PCPs, slug guns, whatever, is the cleaning versus firearms is night and day. Until you use the wrong ammo. Because with that choked barrel in the oversized ammo, it chambered good. It fired well. It was dead on. But then it wasn't, and I looked down the barrel. It was like as if I shot a 22 long rifle. Maybe 3,000 rounds of ammo with never cleaning the gun. That's what it looked like. It was caked on lead fouling embedded into the barrel. I had to clean the absolute crap out of the thing. And then once I did, I ran the same ammo through it. It never shot well after I cleaned it. It, it never got back to... At 70 yards, I'd probably have like... An inch or so group. At 70 yards with this ammo, I had about a foot and a half group. Yeah. So, it was, that was a new experience for me. Fortunately, though, we now are running the right ammo, and it's, it's, it's a laser beam. So the main takeaways from this, if you're looking to get into PCP air guns, do your research. Find a company that wants to support you after the sale, not just to get the sale. Find a gun that meets your specifications that you're looking for. Power, range, capacity, caliber. You're gonna get an incredible amount of calibers to choose from, and with each caliber comes varying degrees of energy levels. Are you looking to hunt? Are you looking just to plink? Do you wanna just tether all day and not have to worry about refilling other than reloading magazines or, or single feeding ammo in? The best thing I can say though is I would not cheap out on a compressor. I would get the best compressor that you could possibly afford. If it came down to not buying one or two guns that you wanted and getting a solid compressor that's actually going to last and be with you for an extended amount of time. Because if you lose your compressor, what are you going to do to fill? You have to buy another replacement of some sort. If you have a warranty. You're going to have to wait for the warranty to be exchanged. You're going to have a bunch of downtime. Oh, and last but not least, keep every single box you get. Because more than likely, when you need it, you're not going to have it. And that's just how things work. It's Murphy's Law. Finding a box to fit a compressor would be a nightmare. And if you want to have it shipped back out and have it done at a store where they're going to box it for you, you're going to probably pay... A couple hundred dollars. I know before I got into this, I read a story about someone who threw out the box and had to ship the unit back. So I learned from them. If you have any other questions, just comment below and I'll try and answer them if I can. All right. See ya.